let's jump into some neuroanatomy and we'll start with the cortex, the outside layer of your brain. All right, cortex, which is just the outside part of your brain. Outside brain. And if you look at the brain, you turn it to the side, looking at this angle, you have something that looks kind of like this. So this is the outside portion of your brain, your cortex. And the cortex is divided into four parts or four lobes. We have your frontal lobe, all right, frontal. You have your parietal, your occipital, and then lastly, your temporal. And they all have different functions. We'll talk about the frontal one first. Your frontal lobe is made up of a lot of parts. You have a portion called the prefrontal cortex. All right, prefrontal. And their prefrontal cortex is basically what makes us us. So it controls our executive function, our critical thinking, our logic, our, our problem solving skills. It also controls our social behavior. So I'll just write executive function, executive function, and social skills. And then when it's not as developed and you kind of lack you know, critical thinking skills and social skills. So it's not as developed in, in teens. That's why we, we do the dumb things we do. Also, if you have a lesion, then you'll kind of see these signs. So you'll see signs like doing and saying things that we don't deem socially appropriate. Socially inappropriate. You might start to lose those critical thinking skills. So I just write loss of executive function. And if it's so bad, your primitive reflexes can actually come out. Primitive reflexes. And all of this can happen if there's a lesion in this part that makes us humans human. So that's your prefrontal cortex. One of the biggest and most important functions of your frontal lobe is you have this area called the motor cortex. So I'll just write motor. And this motor area is divided into two things. You can have premotor and the actual motor, so your motor proper. So the pre-motor portion plans your movement. I just write pre-motor motor, <laughs> plans your movement. So pre-motor plans, and the actual motor portion does the movement, does movement. So your motor cortex plays a huge role in everything we're doing, what I'm doing right now. So don't forget that portion is found in your frontal lobe. You also have other things that are found in your frontal lobe. You have your eye fields. Let's write it down here. Eye fields. And your eye fields control your eyes, namely because we're still talking about the frontal lobe and motor function. It controls your eye movement. So eye field. Equals eye movement. And if there's a lesion in your frontal eye field, then your eye movement will be off. And actually you have your eyes will deviate towards that lesion. So I write eyes deviate towards lesion. You also have something called your Broca's area. Getting pretty crowded now. Broca's, Broca's, again, because we're talking about frontal lobe, because we're talking about motor, it's gonna be the motor aspect of your speech. How I am talking now, controlling and planning all the muscles in speech. All right, motor, speech. Motor speech. And it's good to actually know like the particular areas of places like your Broca's areas and your inferior gyrus right down here. So that way, if you say there's something wrong in the Broca area, it does X, Y, Z, and then someone asks you to point to the Broca area, you actually know where it is. So you don't look like a fool. So just kind of know generally where these things are. And that's all in your frontal lobe. So done with the frontal lobe, let's move on to your parietal lobe. Your parietal lobe, right down here, parietal is your main sensory. So we talked about motor, now we're talking about sensory. So our sensory, and it has their sensory cortex. So this area we call the sensory cortex. Sensory cortex. And if that's not all, it also helps you integrate numbers and writing. We sometimes call this the association cortex. So there's an area here called the association cortex. That is part of your parietal lobe. Why do we call it the association cortex? Well, when I write something, 
if I write B A R A I N, then you see that letter and you kind of associate it with something. You associate it with the letter B, the second letter of the alphabet, the noise that it makes. And then you see all these and it, you associate it with a word, a meaning, brain. So we just call it the association complex. So when you, when you see numbers and writing, you kind of associate with with the things you've learned and you integrate it and your parietal lobe is what helps integrate it. What can happen if something is wrong with your parietal lobe? Well, to understand that we have to first understand something. Your brain is split up into hemispheres. So if we look at the brain from the back, you actually see there's a split in the middle and you have two separate hemispheres. So if we're looking at this angle, this would be my left side, this would be my right side, so right, left and right. And it's very particular you know this because a lot of brain function depends on different hemisphere and it's, very, and it's even more pronounced in the parietal lobe because you have a dominant hemisphere and a non-dominant hemisphere. The dominant hemisphere doesn't depend on whether you have dominant left hand or dominant right hand. It doesn't depend on that. It's usually your left regardless of handiness. So right, this is your dominant. And so your right by default would be your non-dominant. All right, non-dom. Lesions on the left will usually affect this ability to integrate numbers and writing. You won't be able to write, we, a fancy way to call that a graphia, you won't be able to do math. Fancy way to call that is a calculia. So I'll just write a graphia, a calculia. Because you see all this stuff and you can't integrate it. Yeah, you can't associate it with anything. So you can't write, you can't do math. You can also see uh, other signs like finger anosia. That just means you can't sense your finger. So if you Put your fingers away and you don't look at it and someone point, pokes one of your fingers you can't tell which finger they poked so all right finger anosia and another thing you can see is left and right dissociation so you can't tell left from right yeah you just can't sense these things anymore so left and right dissociation left right dissociation all this is called gertman syndrome gertman syndrome and it is due to a problem in your dominant parietal lobe. Things that affect your non-dominant parietal lobe are gonna affect the second portion of your parietal function, your sensory. So one of the most pronounced things you can get is something called hemispatial neglect. This is when you basically lose all sensory input from one side of your body. So your right side of the body you just basically doesn't, don't even know it exists. So you'll be bumping in the wall and smashing things. And this side just doesn't, you just don't register the side. So that's hemispatial neglect. Now, if you have a parietal lesion in your right lobe causing hemispatial neglect, which side of your body does it affect? Does it affect your right side or your left side? Something you should know, when we're talking about the parietal lobe, lesions here affect the contralateral side contralateral side, the opposite side. So I'll ask the question again, if you have hemispatial neglect of your right side, you're just bumping into things, where is your parietal lobe affected? It'd be your left side, your left hemisphere. And if it's your left side that's affected, which parietal hemisphere? Be your right side. So it's contralateral, all right? Should be easy enough. That is your parietal lobe. Let's talk about your other lobes. Next one up is temporal, temporal. Temporal lobe is where you integrate sound, so your auditory center. And there's a special area of your temporal lobe called your Wernicke's area, Wernicke. And the Wernicke's area helps you process speech. So you watching this can process and understand what I'm saying thanks to your auditory and Wernicke's area. All right, process speech. Last but not least, occipital. Occipital is your visual center. Helps you integrate visual input. And those are the lobes of your brain. Now, there's something I want to talk about a little in a little bit more detail. We kind of glanced over Broca's area and Wernicke's area. I just want to make sure we really understand it. Broca's area, because it's in your frontal lobe, is due to the motor aspect of speech. And if you have something wrong with your Broca's area, you can't really speak. So, so if you have a Broca lesion, 
you can't get the words out. You can understand things just fine, but when you try to talk, you can't get the words out. And it's incredibly frustrating because they know what they want to say, they just can't say it. So I just write, can't speak. And we call that dysarthria. And I'll say it is frustrating. If there's a problem with your Warner Keys area, I'll just write Warner Keys lesion, then you can't understand, you can't comprehend the speech. You can talk just fine. Talk just fine. There's nothing wrong with your motor area, you talk just fine. But you can't comprehend what you're saying, you can't comprehend what other people are saying to you, so you just kind of string words together. We call that word salad, you're just kind of throwing different words around. So, a uh, typical sentence in a working situation would be pen the day, right on board, apple tomorrow, just fine. Something like that. So, it's just a bunch of words strung together with no actual meaning. So, we call that a word salad. Now, there has to be something that connects these two. There has to be something that connects your comprehension of speech and then your motor of speech. That way you can understand what someone's saying and then say something back. The thing that connects the two is your arcuate fasciculus. Your arcuate fasciculus. This is what helps integrate both the comprehension part and the motor part. So I'll just write integrate. And so they kind of link the two together. So damages in any of these areas can cause problems with speech. Problems with speech. We'll call that aphasia. We can break it into speech fluidity, your ability to speak. Speech fluidity. It's kind of dealing with brokers. Your ability to comprehend, comprehension, just dealing with Warner keys, and then, and then your ability to integrate the two. So there's a test we can do to make sure you both understand it and then you can use your mouth and actually produce the motor aspects of speech. So we call that repetition. So you understand what I'm saying and then you can repeat it. So repetition. And that kind of deals with all three areas. So damage your broca area or the area around it can damage your motor function. So that can affect your speech fluidity. So I write damage to broca slash area around. Damage to your Werner keys or the area around it can affect your comprehension. Damage to Wernicke slash around it. And then lastly, what can affect repetition? Well, it'll have to directly damage one of the three areas, Broca, Wernicke, or Arcuate. So it has to be, so it has to be direct damage. Okay? If you damage the area around these areas, this is a little too mild to damage your repetition. So it has to be direct, all right? It has to be direct to affect your repetition. So, so when it directly affects your brokers, you can't repeat things because you can't physically say it. If it directly damages your Wernicke, you can't repeat things because you can't comprehend it. And if it directly affects your arcuate, you can't repeat things because you can't integrate the two. Okay, so it has to be direct. Let's, we'll do a few examples. So we'll just write speech fluidity, comprehension, Repetition. If your broca area is affected, what happens to your speech fluidity? It's not gonna work. How about your comprehension? Does, it have, does your broca area have anything to do with comprehension? No, so it'll stay the same. Repetition, we said, it has, we said direct damage to any of the three areas can cause damage to repetition. So that won't work either. So that's just classic brocas. How about something a little bit more funky? How about something like trans? cortical motor. This is damage to area around brocas, but spares brocas directly. So damage around broca will affect your speech fluidity. Yes. Will it affect your comprehension? Does, does that area have anything to do with comprehension? No. Will it affect your repetition? Does it directly damage broca? No. So your repetition is spared. That's just a few examples. There's a, there's a lot more in first aid and, and I want you to figure out why speech fluidity, comprehension, and repetition is affected the way it is in those disorders, okay? Hope you enjoyed the video, thanks.